Hello everyone and welcome to a Blender tutorial on how to create large scale structures efficiently for games like Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal Space Program in particular has a problem where it loads everything into RAM ahead of time and so that constrains what mods can do because people will want to make prettier planets, make prettier rockets, you know, have parts for that. And so when you create like these domes that I have here, I have to be very conscious about the size of the textures and the models so that we don't overload a person's install and make it impossible for them to run the game. And in this case, these domes that you see here all together, the whole package is 75 megabytes. And so that's very efficient and I'm going to talk about how I did that in without making it look horrible. And so there you see the stuff. We've got a greenhouse. We've got two other domes with structures inside. So how did I do this? Making sure that it was so trim. Uh, it's not the best textures ever and it wouldn't be good for a Blender render. I mean, you could definitely make it look better for a Blender render, but we have to work within the confines of a very restrictive game environment and this is how to do it. First of all, the terrain, and this works for both inside the domes as well as outside. I sort of cut apart the terrain in chunks, not even chunks. I selected polygons randomly basically in patches as you can see here. And then on the left hand side you can see the texture that I'm applying those patches to and I'm enlarging them so that they fill up that texture. And so with one 2K texture, I am using that same 2K texture for different parts of this large terrain and patching it together. Now, if you have a seamless texture, you might think, well, I've got a seamless texture, so I don't have to do this patching thing. I could just repeat the seamless texture over and over and over again. The problem is if you zoom out on that, you're going to end up seeing the repetitiveness of it. By making it patchy like this, it see I mean, of course, there's going to be discontinuities in it, but because it's basically a random terrain texture, when you zoom in, you can't see the discontinuities if they're not straight lines. There is unevenness in the definition and detail of the stuff because the patches I made weren't the same size, but I over time correct that. I adjust them a little bit here and there to make sure that they look proper. Uh, but as long as the edge is not firmly defined, if it's not a straight edge, then people just generally don't notice when you're using the same texture over and over and over again. There are undoubtedly easier ways to do all this. I'm not a Blender Pro. I'm just telling you what I did so that maybe it'll help you. Now here I have the Starship Tower that's going to be going in the center of the big dome. And this is how I make the sort of conical shape at the top. I use proportional editing, that's O, when you apply O, you get that little icon light up and you can use your scroll wheel to size the scope of the proportional editing and then taking just the top uh, polygons, uh, you can scale those down and everything else scales down proportionally depending on the setting that you picked for proportional editing. And so that's how I get the smooth cone here. And that's really helpful for fairings and all sorts of things like for airplanes, I often have to, on the front end of the airplane, do this. So many situations where that can be applied. So now I have that big towering starship-shaped building. This, like, uh, SpaceX Starship was used as a building in the middle of the dome. And then here I use beveling, very simple beveling on a cube, in order to create another habitat for the inside of our dome. And I'm going to make much use of these two basic shapes. And so I'm going to unwrap them here. Now we're not gonna have the soil texture that I've got on the left-hand side there, but I'm unwrapping them on the left-hand side regardless of the texture. And the goal is to make sure that they fill the texture as much as possible. You see here when I do this smart unwrap, it doesn't fill it. It's only taking about half the texture, that's not good. So I add seams, uh, so I select rings around and I mark the seam using the menu for the edge. So. There it's filling a little bit better. I go back to the edge menu and select a few more loops and mark seam again. So we've got two more seams and then I once again do the smart UV unwrap and now it's filling it up much better. You can also manually manipulate the polygons on the left hand side to arrange them so that they fill things better as well. But that was good enough for me. Now I'm gonna copy the bottom section here up to that bottom seam and I am going to duplicate it and turn it into another building. It's just gotta be a cylindrical building like this. Now we've unwrapped the texture. 
So the same texture, whatever I end up using, will be used for this building as well. And so we can create multiple buildings using the same basically 2K or 4K texture in this case. Now because I just copied the polygons from the Starship Tower, I didn't have a ceiling on this. Uh, so I just copied the floor which was unwrapped. Remember we can only use polygons that are already here because those have been unwrapped and applied to that texture. And so I copied the floor which had been unwrapped and copied it to make a ceiling and positioned it properly up there. And then once we have it posi positioned properly, we can select all the polygons, all the ver vertices really, and then go clean up and merge by distance. And then the ceiling will be merged into the shape and we won't have any gap there. So next up I take the cylinder and then I turn it on its side and we're going to have a half dome shape here, uh, sort of like a hanger and if you enlarge it it could be used as a hanger as well. Remember these things can also be resized and turned into new things. One of the other ways, I'm not going to show in this video to improve upon their looks when we have the same texture being used over and over and over again for efficiency, is to add a little detailing on them and maybe I'll make a different video where I do that. But here I'm just going to cut off the bottom. I selected vertices and used J for join to draw those lines between those vertices across. And then at the bottom I select all the polygons at the bottom and delete those. So there they go. We have no bottom on this right now. And that's sort of important because again we didn't have that unwrapped. I can create a bottom, I can just press F to fill, and then I can sort of unwrap it separately, which is what I do. So I press F there, and then I'll place it on the texture separately. And as long as we have a continuous texture, it'll be fine. For the beveled building, the rectangular one, I decided to make a two floor version, so I just double it, and then I cut off the bottom. And so here we are cutting off the bottom polygons, and if it's a two floor thing, the fact that it might have a seam in the middle doesn't really matter. It makes sense that it would have a seam in the middle, it'd be like a doubled one of the first edition. And here I'm making one that's more scrunched and more square instead of rectangular. And so we need to cut out the center section, but we have an end gone. That is, the floor has a lot of different edges instead of just four, which is a quad. Uh, shape that has just four is a quad, but I fixed that by cutting it and then uh, joining, again using J to join the vertices, and now we have a uh, sort of flowing figure. It's still end gone on the, out, uh, on the outer portions, but the center portions are now all quads, and we can just sort of select those polygons there and delete them. And then I'll mesh the two sides. Now there was an extra floor in the middle there because of the building we originally had, uh, but I just deleted that. We don't need that right now. I'll do the interiors separately. So here I'm meshing the two so that we get a square building instead of a rectangular building. And then once we get them close together enough, we can just use the merge by distance uh, to get rid of the extra vertices and uh, fill and remove any holes. So, we have six buildings here just like that. They use two textures right now. And so that way we have a little bit more efficiency. And next up, I decide to make the domes. Now, you might not have the geodesic dome option uh, right there. Uh, if you don't, then you should go into your add-ons. I think it's under edit in Blender. Edit add-ons and then there's an add-on for various different meshes like geodesic domes. I think there's a, just a geodesic dome add-on. But look through the add-ons to see if there are any meshes you might like. There's a lot of different add-ons that people don't realize are there that are installed with Blender but just not activated. So you might as well activate them. All right, so the geodesic dome thing can allow you to make lots of different shapes with it and it has a lot of different options for how to shape it. As you can see, you can create sort of a very alien looking thing if you want to as well. Uh, but of course we just want a dome and in particular a dome that will fit the buildings that we have. But yeah, plenty of options for what you want to do with that. Uh, so we are going to shape it around the buildings as you can see here. And I also wanted the hexagons to be able to fit inside Starship as if it delivered them. This is just, I don't think it'd be able to, but uh, this is for later purposes potentially. So uh, we have that dome and then I decide to cut it in half 
and I just use a boolean with a cube. So uh, take the geodesic dome, uh, use boolean, select the cube, that's going to cut it, and then we, we're going to cut it. Uh, not necessarily, I mean, it's probably an okay way of doing it. It does create an uneven sort of situation at the bottom there. Doesn't look great, but we're going to have sort of a foundation portion at the bottom. And we gotta delete the bottom section there. And now I'm going to create a cylinder for that sort of bottom bit that the kerbals are actually gonna see very up close. The dome section, they're not gonna see very close up. But this bottom bit has be had better be good quality because they're going to be walking right up to it. So that is a consideration as we do this. So this is just going to be a cylinder at the bottom there to cover up the, the stuff at the bottom. And then I inset the two uh, sides of it and then delete the center portion. So it has some thickness. Another way of doing this is just to delete those uh, two end bits and then use solidify, a modifier that you can add to it. The solidify modifier comes in handy a lot. Anyway, but that's what I have right now. And then I need to make sure that the texturing is efficient. So what I'm going to do is delete most of it. I'm going to delete all but a 45 degree arc. So that portion is the 45 degree arc that will get repeated across the whole thing eight times. And so the rest gets deleted. And then with this section, I unwrap it to the texture so that we can have it be efficient. And, you know, since it's an outer wall, you know, you could think of it as a brick pattern. Maybe it is a brick pattern, but the fact that it repeats is not going to be a big problem. So I create some seams to make sure that it's going to unwrap properly. So marks, uh, select the edges, go up there, mark seam. And then once we unwrap, it'll take up a lot more of the texture space. So once again, I just do smart UV project and eh, it's still not great. So I eventually do some moving around. You can just use the circle selector box select and uh, just move those polygons around so that they take up more of the room. And yeah, that's a major goal of arranging the textures. Another goal of arranging the textures for different purposes is if you have specific patterns, like, like on planes on, with deliveries, you want to make it easier for people to repaint it for planes, uh, then arranging the polygons on the texture in a certain way so that they can repaint it easier is very important. But anyway, that is not the subject for today. So I've got this little arc and of course I'm going to repeat it. So I'm just going to rotate it by 45 degrees at a time. Uh, copy, rotate, copy, rotate, and make it like that. Making sure of course that the, the center of it is at the center. But of course, if we start with a cylinder in the first place, the center of it should already be in the center of the cylinder. So there we have it. That is that. And then shade smooth if we want to, and then uh, make sure that it is like that. So these days with Blender 4, you can just select the auto smooth under normal, and then it'll do everything. You don't have to shade smooth first, but this is Blender 3 point something. All right, so next up I create the frame for the domes. And to do that, I duplicate the dome and then use the wireframe uh, modifier and then thicken it a little bit. So give it a little bit more thickness so it shows up. And there we have it, there we have the dome, uh, the dome frame. So the initial dome is the bluish clear texture, transparent texture, and the frame will be the solidified texture. And it's as simple as that. And so I give it some color uh, but ultimately I'll give it some texture. But because the kerbals are not getting up close to it, I'm not going to unwrap it in any special way. I'll show you what I do. We just need some color to it. And I use this sort of palette thing. I originally created this palette for CubeSats. That's why at the top it has an Arduino unit. Uh, but what I do is I unwrap the whole frame there. I shrink it down and put it in the space of the color that I want, <laughs> basically. Since they're not getting up close to it, I'm not going to be picky. And then the clear portions for the dome, uh, well, they're going to be mostly transparent anyway. They really just need a tint. And so they don't need a bump map or a really complicated texture. And so when we do that, I just give them one of the bluish textures instead of one of the grayish textures. And that's the end of that. So here, selecting, I think the 
the clear portion of the domes. There we go. And just smart UV unwrap, shrink, and I shrink it into that blue area. And that's it. So if it doesn't really need all the detail, because whoever is going around it is not getting up close to it, then we can do it this way. Or maybe it's just something small like plants, as I think I do later in the video. So it looks like that here, but the transparency I'm going to apply using the Kerbal Space Program shaders through Unity. So I, I don't really care about the transparency here. I gave it a token sort of transparency. And uh, well, when it's rendered, you can sort of see stuff inside. I, I think I ultimately make it a little bit better because I decide that I might want to do renders in Blender itself with them. But yeah, I keep it simple. Now the interior needs some grass. And once again, I just cut a quarter portion of it and then apply the grass to that quarter portion and then duplicate that quarter so that I can use the 2K texture that I have there. And these are actually from Blender Guru's Polygon site. I think it's P-O-L-L-I-G-O-N. Uh, but yeah, I got the textures from that site and that's what I'm using here. And you can see, you can, you can tell if you zoomed out that it's being repeated. Uh, you can sort of tell, but uh, in this case, the Kerbals are actually going to be pretty close up to it. And we're not really going to see it very well from a great distance because it'll be out, that camera will be outside the dome. So it's okay. Now for the more detailed texturing on the buildings and on the Starship Tower, which will also be applied to the other four buildings that we have in the scene, I use Substance Painter. And uh, that's because Substance Painter gives you all these nifty options and uh, can allow me to tweak the textures. And I sort of like this particular texture, the sort of padded insulation texture for this rectangular building. And I already had a Starship texture for the Starship building motif. So uh, you can see this padded one. I forget, I think I got this off of Substance Share or something like that. And it was a very good one. So yeah, just tweaking that to make it look right. So that's what Substance Painter is for. You can very quickly make textures like that. And here we go. Uh, so uh, the bump map for the textures and sort of the, whether they're shiny or not are not applied in Blender right now. So they don't look great. They look a lot better in Kerbal Space Program than they do here. Now this hatch I actually got off of the NASA ISS model from NASA's model website. So this is an official ISS hatch and I decided that that would be great for using as our doors. I mean, it's appropriate, right? So. Uh, I take one of the big buildings, the cylindrical buildings, and turn it into an airlock. So we resize it, make it smaller, and move it in position, and then the little hatch gets to be the front end of it. And it's a very detailed texture for the hatch because NASA made it, and they made a very nice uh, International Space Station model, so I'm happy to make use of it. Now the hatch, the airlock, doesn't really need a rounded bottom, it needs a flat bottom. So I cut out the bottom uh, part of the front face and then I move all of these vertices up. Uh, I use scale zero, S, uh, SZ zero, in order to get all those vertices in line in the Z axis and then move them up. All right, so then we need to sort of cut out, we don't need to cut out the space for the door, but I decided to do that because I might want to do interiors later. So I use beveling to create sort of a, a block that I can use to cut out the door shape from the cylinder, from the airlock portion. So cutting out the door shape from the airlock portion and there the door fits in and that's how that's done. So just a Boolean thing. Now I also have a greenhouse in the scene and I have plants in the greenhouse and so this is just me, as I mentioned before, unwrapping the, the greenery into the green slot and then soil into the brown slot, like that. So I keep that simple as well. And I also wanted some solar panels outside, so a huge solar array farm, a solar farm. And these, because they're going to be duplicated, it's important to me that the mesh is not too complicated because it's gonna be a lot of these. So they're mostly extruded cubes and then I use mirroring so that I can just unwrap one portion of it uh, for the texture and then it'll just be mirrored and repeated like that. There's a cylinder for the rotating portion for the solar panels, right? The uh, solar panels go on these rotating tubes uh, and then I 
right there decide to move that section down so it's more interesting it's not flat and I don't think it'd work very well for solar panels if that was flat again the way of the solar panels and then I place the panels they're just cubes so I resize the cube to make it panel shaped and to fit the cylinder and then I have this panel texture I think this was also from Polygon from uh, Ben Guru's website and uh, I take each panel and size it manually on that panel texture so that it covers the panel texture and then I take the other panel and then move it to the other panel texture and then I just duplicate these two bits. So I just mirror it in one axis and mirror it in the other axis and then so we make a much more efficient use of these textures uh, than just unwrapping the whole thing would be. So yeah. Uh, then we have that. That's how it looks in the end. And after a little bit, I tweak them so that they're tilted, just like that. Make sure that they're parented to the cylindrical tube. And there we have our solar arrays. And here, the, the structure part doesn't need to be highly detailed. As long as the solar panels are highly detailed, it sells it. And the kerbals are probably not getting too close to those, but just in case I decide to add a ramp. Now, again, because they have to be duplicated so much, you saw the huge area that the solar panels would eventually cover. That's why it needs to be the case that the meshes are just simple cubes. So then that makes it easier to duplicate. And we know the textures are mainly just that solar panel texture, and that's just a 2K texture. So here I'm just trying to make a nice little ramp, and I'm going to use the wireframe modifier to make the upper portion of it. I sort of separated off the bottom portion so that part is solid. So there's the wireframe. And again, I use wireframe for the handrails. And normally I just use join to uh, crisscross uh, the vertices. So there I am using J for join to make the crisscrossing portions for the side rails. And then that's that. So anyway, this has been a tutorial on how I made those buildings for Kerbal Space Program with relatively little space, 75 megabytes being quite little. Obviously this would not be sufficient for a AAA game or anything like that, but by Kerbal standards, what the quality I've got in there is not too bad, I think. So yeah, as I get this railing placed properly, it needs a little bit of a tweak to the angle. I will say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.